hey now, good morning, happy Thursday, PSW staff, clients, friends, joining us for our LA class because I get homesick even though I live here. You know, it's such a great city we live in. I really hope you're enjoying it. Uh, us digging into some of these neighborhoods and areas as much as I am because it's a real pleasure doing this with you. Um, yesterday also was a real pleasure with Rodrigo, blind composer, pianist, but wrote the most famous guitar concerto, classical guitar concerto. Such a great piece. Hope you enjoyed that. Then tomorrow we see um, your film scoring results for Blade Runner. All right. Uh, I think all that business is taken care of. Uh, today we're going to look at a really important um, place, venue. It's still there and it's in a little bit closer to our school, a little bit in that side of town, a little bit of South Los Angeles because we got to got to look at all the neighborhoods, you know. It's not just the Hollywood sign, although we will talk about that a little bit. So uh, today we're going to look at the LA Memorial Coliseum. <laughs> So it's a multi-purpose. I mean, you can do concerts, sports, anything you want there. Uh, and it's an exposition park. You guys know that. It's near USC because it's actually the tro the Trojans, the USC football, that's their home stadium. Um, and back in the day, it was known as the greatest stadium in the world. <laughs> I don't know who gave it that title. Probably somebody who had had some financial interest and gain in this Coliseum, but uh, it sounds so old fashioned to say, to say it actually. But uh, this was, uh, this was another way, we're gonna look at with the timeline and all that stuff, another way to bring the world stage to Los Angeles. Everybody to take note of our city because when you think we've only been an established city, you know, for like a hundred years, maybe a little bit more, but like a metropolitan, you know, it's not like Denmark or other countries that they've, they've been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. We're a new city. That's why I kind of think some of this is, is kind of cool to talk about. You know, even New York is much older in some ways. So it's, it's, it's kind of cool. So the world stage, specifically with the, the, the Olympics, and we've talked about the Olympics, 1932 Olympics. Um, so uh, Exposition Park used to be called Agricultural Park. Um, that's a little bit harder to say. And so Exposition Park's about 1872 it starts. I mean, it was always there, right? Even when dinosaurs were there. 1872 incorporated into about 1910, it's Agriculture Park, because probably there was a lot of agricultural things there, right? Farming and crops and stuff that I, I'm not really, I don't really know that much about, but. So Harrison Gray Otis is, is dead by this time. And he's the founder of, you know, the times that we've talked about. And Harry Chandler we talk about every time because Harry Chandler is somebody like Scott Joplin where I, I can't believe how much influence they've given where we almost have to talk about them every class because it's you know, we always have to take a step back and look at how did we get here. And so with, how did LA get here? Okay, the Coliseum was here. But who wanted the Coliseum? Well, Harry Chandler was one of those guys. And we know that he was, you know, in charge of the times, in charge of the press, in charge of all the information, because they would leave little booklets, uh, little advertising uh, advertisements in trains all around the country to say, come to LA. The LA Times would, I'm sorry. You know, the LA Times would leave little advertisements because as we looked about, you know, it was even a dollar just from Kansas City to Los Angeles. So they wanted everybody to come here because, you know, to make it to, they wanted money, but also to make it, you know, see the world to see, you know, how beautiful it was out here. Um, so 1921 to 23, it's constructed and it's a tribute to the uh, World War I veterans. That's why it's the memorial. Um, and then it was a landmark in 1984, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. So it opens in 1923. So we need a, we need, of course, I know we needed this timeline. 1923, LA's, is changing because the Hollywood sign is erected in 1923. Remember, just Harry Chandler's idea, just for just for temporary, you know, advertising real estate. It was meant to only last maybe a few months or a year. The Hollywood sign, and look at it now. And don't get me going on why it's not lit up because we'll I'll get on a tangent and it's not pretty to see. Um, Biltmore is the same year as this, 1923. 1923 is a huge year in LA. Biltmore. 
politicians can come and campaigns can happen and it's a very serious hotel even capone stayed there a little bit later scary the beatles tried to land on the roof when they first came in the 60s biltmore that's where every it's it's the center in in downtown right across from persian square biltmore is big because it legitimizes us as you know bring your le your leaders your kings you know it's a it's a grand hotel it's still there beautiful Hollywood sign symbolic of real estate and then of course the you know the Hollywood movie colony and we talked about how uh, Daida Wilcox named Hollywood but it, they were teetotalers they didn't want anything to do with show business it wasn't really show business until you know probably around this time maybe the 1910s 15s and then by the 20s you know you're getting you know like we talked about Buster Keaton and silent stars are, are happening a lot and then with talkies you know 1927 so we're not there yet 1923 it's really exciting to see what's going on so harry chandler says okay we need la to to show la and the olympics because the olympics are going to bring a lot of money right and if we think about in the 1880s you know this is when harrison gray otis takes over the times it's about 33,000 people here it sounds like a lot but it's nothing because by 1930 there's about 2 million people Okay, so beautiful Coliseum, you know, a be beautiful designed by people that we know, father and son, John and Donald Parkinson, because they built City Hall in 1928. Beautiful City Hall. It's become maybe one of my favorite buildings the more I, I, I think about the city and took a walk there the other day and looked at how, how wonderful it is. So they designed City Hall, which we know that was around before 1928, but now that building that stands there, right across from the Times building that we, that we talked about um, a few weeks ago. Because remember, we would be like, okay, they'd find the dirt at City Hall, go across the street and write about that dirt, you know, in the Times in the next morning. Okay, so they, they designed that building. They also designed Bullock's Wiltshire. That's Again, I'm reviewing a lot of this, but this is how we find the story. There's got to be a story to these LA history classes, a narrative that drives it, rather than just random buildings. So they des they designed Bullock's Wilshire. That's that's big because that's gonna that's saying hey, there's more stuff westward of downtown because as we know, 1900s downtown is the center of everything, and then they start going westward on Wilshire. You know, this is past MacArthur Park. So Bullock's Wilshire, even though it's a department store, and now it's a, the law school today. It's symbolic of, just like the Hollywood sign, it's very symbolic. They also designed Union Station. This is 1939. The, the Union Station comes a little bit later, but you know, railroads had been coming in for a long time, the, 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 and the red car and all these things. But with Union Station, it's really everybody's now coming. And it's kind of cool because Union Station, of course, is in our movie this week, Blade Runner. And you know, we took a look at that on Monday. So those are the architects. So that, that's what, what I'm talking about. So. When it opens in 1923, it's the largest stadium in Los Angeles. It holds about 75,000 people, but then they expand it because the Olympics are coming to seat about 100,000 people. Mm. And they have that really cool Olympic torch that was added. And, it, it, and a lot of people called it the Olympic Stadium because of that Olympic torch. So did it work? A lot of people weren't able to come because of the depression, including the president, Herbert Hoover, but they still had a ton of games held, even though 37 nations competed in this. And they're saying that it brought LA about a million dollars. That's a lot of money during the depression in 1932. Um, of course, we know there's been tons of concerts there too, not just sports. Um, and then baseball, just a little bit of history because we did Dodger, we revisited Dodger Stadium not too long ago. We know that the, the Dodgers came here. They, they, they relocated in 1958 from Brooklyn, right? Because they were always the Brooklyn Dodgers and Dodgers because with the, when the tr streetcar came out in Brooklyn, people were had to dodge and get out of the way of the streetcar. And there were a lot of accidents and stuff, so that's where the name Dodgers comes from. Um, so Dodgers relocates in 1958. So they play, they play some games there because their stadium is being built, right? It takes a few years from like 59 to 62 when Dodgers Stadium is being constructed and all that, ho that horrible story about Chavez Ravine and all those families that were, you know, taken apart so but it's weird because I was I was looking at the stadium as we look at it how could that be a, how could have that have been a baseball field but then when you look at pictures it, it looks it's, it, rightly so it's not a, there's no foul line it's it looks like a ridiculous baseball field so obviously they couldn't keep that up this is also where John F Kennedy accepted his Democratic nomination in 1960 
because you know you need kind of a sports arena because show business and uh, politics and sports and all those things all go together of course he's going to be assassinated in a few years and then we know his brother robert kennedy is going to accept the same thing in los angeles eight years later and then be assassinated he's going to die at the ambassador hotel that we looked at and so you know la has a lot of things going on so hope you enjoyed a little bit of the coliseum uh supposedly it's gonna it's gonna be the first stadium to host the summer olympics three times uh when it hosts the incoming one because it's gonna host it in 2028 the summer olympics so it'll be the first stadium to have the summer olympics three times so um yeah just uh, a cool building i don't think i'd ever been i've ever been there actually but you know no need to have gone there just to know about the city is is important enough so hope you enjoyed this have a great rest of the day and i'll see you tomorrow bye